A murder investigation is underway in Balcones Heights, why police are trying to track down the victim's son. And fiesta season will soon be here, and that means many organizations are starting to release their medals. We're going to take a look at the NIOSA medal. And another storm system heads our way. More clouds tomorrow and much cooler. We've got a look at that forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. And at this hour, the Senate reconvening in President Trump's impeachment trial. In this phase, senators now get a chance to ask questions. This comes after several days of opening arguments from the House impeachment managers, as well as the president's defense team. You can watch today's impeachment proceedings live right now on KSAT.com. Here at home, a son allegedly beat his 76-year-old mother to death, and now police say he is on the run. This happening late last night at a Balcones Heights apartment complex, the Spanish Keys, that's on Babcock. Sarah Costa spoke with the Balcones Heights police chief this morning, who describes the homicide as a truly sad situation. It's something that you don't train for, um, especially when you have you know an elderly victim like that. Balcones Heights Police Chief John Jahanara says when his investigators arrived at the apartment complex, the Spanish Keys, they found a 76-year-old woman severely beaten and bloodied Tuesday night. She was dead when police arrived to the complex on Babcock. Chief Jahanara described it as a horrific scene. It's hard to to take in as far as if, you know anybody can injure you know your own mother or you know an elderly person in that capacity. Jahanara says they believe the woman's 55-year-old son, Michael Wayne Kerbo, is responsible for beating and killing his mother. The victim called police to the complex earlier that night at 7 o'clock to help her kick her son out of her apartment. She told police they had an argument, but by the time police arrived, Kerbo had disappeared. Police say it was around 11 o'clock when a friend of Kerbo's actually called them from this Shell gas station down the block from the complex, saying that Kerbo had mentioned something odd about his mother. Something may have happened to her. Uh, she may be injured. She may have passed away. Uh, it was just all questionable. When the witness had received this information, he found it odd, so that's why he notified us. Police say Kerbo's friend is cooperating with them as they continue to search for the woman's son. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. The evidence to merit a conviction, not there. That is what defense attorney said during a closing argument in the trial of Anton Harris, the accused medical center rapist. Harris is accused of raping and robbing a nurse in her medical center apartment back on May 28th in 2017. She was among five women raped in that area during 2016 and May of 2017 when Harris was arrested. Though the victim was not able to identify Harris, prosecutors pointed to DNA that they argued pointed to Harris as the woman's attacker. If he is convicted, Harris is facing a maximum sentence of life in prison. Police say that they have caught the suspect behind a series of robberies. Pearson Hanna now charged with aggravated robbery. Police think he's behind three robberies. The first one happening September 11th of last year. Police say the suspect walked into a pawn shop in the 4700 block of Ritterman Road and held up a pair of employees at gunpoint. Officers say he took off with cash and multiple pieces of jewelry and then he left in a white SUV. Police say the same pawn shop was hit again in December of last year, but this time the crook unknowingly took a dye pack. Officers say the store manager helped them pin down that suspect. When they tracked him down, they found red dye and a piece of jewelry that appeared to be from that pawn shop inside the white SUV. Police say they also think Hannah could be behind a robbery at a pawn shop in the 5300 block of Walsham Road. And right now on KZ.com, police say a man has been arrested after injuring a child who later died from their injuries. 29-year-old Logan Wayne Harville was arrested Monday and charged with injury to a child. This is a developing story. You can follow the latest right now on KSET.com, and you can find this story on our homepage. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs a blood transfusion, and already this year, South Texas is experiencing a blood shortage, according to University Health System. That's why we need your help during our KSEC Community Blood Drive. Alicia Barrera tells us more about today's event from the University Health Southwest Clinic. 
Good afternoon. Well, you have until 3 p.m. to make it here to the Southwest Clinic and inside staff are already working hard to make sure this is a quick and easy process for blood donors. So why not kick off the new year by helping save someone's life through blood donation? And this is a citywide blood drive and it started yesterday and it's going to run until February 1st. And this is thanks to our KSAC community partner, University Health System. And just so you know, one of the leading causes hospitals need blood are for trauma patients and specifically for those involved in car accidents. To get a better idea, a single car accident victim can require as much as 100 pints of blood. On average, one donation of blood equals about half a pint and the red blood cells, well, they must be used within 42 days of collection which is why it's so important. Everyone's help is needed regularly as blood banks must supply blood for everyday emergencies as well as surgeries. So today you can come donate here at the Southwest Clinic that's located at 2121 Southwest 36th Street and the hours are until 3 p.m. Also Monday through Friday, you can head over to University Hospital's donor room. Their hours vary, but today they will be open until 7 p.m. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. January isn't even over yet. We're already talking Fiesta. This morning, Niosa unveiled its 2020 medal. The colorful new design features flowers and a pair of birds. A night in old San Antonio is sponsored by and benefits the Conservation Society of San Antonio. The organization uses the money it makes for several different projects. More than $12 million has been give given to the society to enable them to do preserving of buildings, do uh, Heritage tours for children, for fourth graders, looking at buildings, historic buildings around San Antonio. And we help to give grants to people who need help in the historic areas to repair their homes and scholarships also. You can buy the medal online at niosa.com or you can go to the Niosa office at 227 South Pressa. It's open weekdays between 9 and 4. You can also get one of the Fiesta medals at the Fiesta store on Broadway. Niosa tickets go on sale March 2nd. And Girl Scout cookies are on sale. And get ready because a million boxes arrived in San Antonio this morning. Those of you who have already put in your orders, you should be getting them soon. The organization says more uh, over the next few days, more Girl Scouts are going to be getting their boxes of cookies so they can get ready for deliveries. This is the first day of a four day process where we distribute nearly mil a million boxes of cookies throughout our 21 county jurisdiction. So by the end of Saturday, over 900,000 boxes of cookies will have been delivered. That's a lot of calories, y'all. The Girl Scout cookie program is more than just a way for you to take a break from your diet and enjoy a cheat day. The program teaches girls about entrepreneurism, money management, public speaking, as well as decision making. I think got new flavors this year too. A couple they of them. do. Yeah, I think so. It'd be interesting. Changing the NBA logo silhouette is gaining some momentum. We'll have that for you in a couple of minutes. More airlines are taking precautions because of the coronavirus. Who's suspending flights amid concerns? Now to the latest on the coronavirus. A plane evacuating more than 200 Americans out of Wuhan, China, now touching down at a military base in California. This as cases of the coronavirus climbed to more than 6,000 worldwide. There have been at least 132 deaths. Five confirmed cases are here in the U.S. And now the CDC is expanding screenings to 20 domestic airports. The White House reportedly considering banning all U.S. flights to China. ABC's Alex Stone has more from Los Angeles. Today, after a nearly 24-hour journey from Wuhan, over 200 Americans evacuated from China, touching down in California. Far away from the public at March Air Reserve Base, the plane taking the U.S. diplomats and other U.S. citizens into quarantine for at least three days. Before arriving in California, the plane landed in Alaska to refuel. We are finally boarding the plane. Patrick Stockstill and his family were on board. We just touched down here on the state side. Big cheer let out in the plane when we landed. Well, on the ground in Alaska, everybody on board was checked twice for any signs of coronavirus. All were cleared and found to have been healthy. The Boeing 747 lined with rows of passengers in face masks. Those working on board wore protective suits. 
In the U.S., a number of those with coronavirus has been growing, and authorities at 20 domestic airports will now screen passengers for symptoms. Americans should know that this is a potentially very serious public health threat. ABC News has learned the White House is not ruling out suspending all flights between the U.S. and China. United and American Airlines are already suspending some flights. Alex Stone, ABC News, Los Angeles. A little chillier today than it was yesterday, but it's a good-looking day. I guess it's all that cold air clearing out the clouds. Yeah, well, it's nice. It is 858 degrees, sort of a crisp, cool winter day. The winds are finally dying down, so that's some good news here. The winds were really gusty yesterday. That probably is why we're seeing mountain cedar counts the way they are today. The aquifer's up a tenth of a foot, but mountain cedar... Yes, it's back in the high category. So is mold. So they're both there. It's a double whammy today. Ash is low. We've got more clouds and rain chances on the way tomorrow. We'll talk about it coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. You're not sniffling as much today as you were, so I guess you I, like I, a lot of I bit the bullet and I, I went ahead oh. and, and got some steroids. So. <laughs> I, it's tough if, if you yeah. are sensitive to mole and mountain cedar. Yeah. This has been a really tough winter. Usually one's up and one's down because the rain plays a factor in both of them, but whatever reason today, they're both there. And they was so. like that yesterday and yes. the day before. Well, and keep in mind, the pollen count is really more indicative of the day before. So it's those winds yesterday that probably kicked up the mountain cedar. We'll see what it does in tomorrow's camp. But in the meantime, line, yes, my eyes are red. And yes, I'm sorry. It's, I'm doing everything I can. It's people, those, people write to me about that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's those yeah. allergies. It, it will do it. Uh, we've also got a big game coming up on Sunday, obviously, Super Bowl. If you have plans to maybe throw a party, We've got your forecast for you. This is a throwback, by the way. I love this graphic. This is a throwback to, you remember Tecmo Super Bowl on Nintendo? Ah, it's a great game. Wow, great yeah. game. Uh, so the forecast, great graphics, man. Yeah, we well, really like that. Uh, <laughs> 70 wow. degrees on Sunday, mostly cloudy. Should be pretty good if you have plans to grill outside or whatever, if you're having a party at your house. The weather actually looks pretty good for that. Meantime, time lapse this morning. It was really nice. We had a beautiful sunrise, clear skies, 58 degrees. Dew point was at 30, or is at 37. We still have a north wind at about 12 miles per hour. So winds are still a little bit breezy, but they're not the, the big gusty winds we were looking at yesterday. We had some gusts up over 30 miles per hour here in San Antonio, and then gusts up over 40 miles per hour out west. 54 degrees in Boulevardy, 59 New Braunfels, 58 stints and 59 right now in Divine. A few 60s mixed in there as well. And there's a look at the wind speeds starting to come down. And the strongest winds now are across our eastern counties. Yesterday it was flip-flopped where our western counties were seeing the really, really strong winds. So, again, things improving in that department. Visible satellite picture shows we've got clear skies. There are some clouds. There's a cloud deck stretching from Houston up towards the Dallas area. But right now it's going to stay off to our east. But as we get into tomorrow, the clouds are going to spread in. And tomorrow's going to be very different than today in the sense that we're going to have clouds, a few rain showers out there, maybe some drizzle. And it's going to be quite a bit colder. This next system is going to draw in some cooler air. If you see where that cloud deck is and temperatures there, a little bit cool underneath those clouds. 44 in Tyler, 43 in Dallas. 40 is basically for the northern half of the state. We've got the warmer stuff down here with 50s and 60s on the map. No rain yet. Uh, we're in between systems right now, but you can see some of the rain and snow out there across Four Corners region, and that is our next si storm system. And uh, again, we've got a little bit of a of a ridge, which creates some quiet weather in between our last system and uh, our new one. This one isn't terribly strong, and there's not a lot of moisture to work with, but the models are hinting at the idea that we will indeed get uh, maybe at least a couple of light showers out there, and I think we could see a little bit of drizzle tomorrow morning for the for the commute, so that can make things uh, a little more difficult. And then by tomorrow afternoon, likely cloudy skies. There could be a couple breaks off to the west and a couple of very light showers. We're not going to see much rain out of this. Anything we see is going to be on the light side. There, there could be some heavier showers maybe along the coast, but uh, not here in San Antonio, I don't think. As we get into Friday morning, still some cloudy skies, but we'll start to see those clouds break up a little bit, probably late Friday 
and the weekend's looking a little bit better. Forecast for today up around 63 for a high temperature. We'll still call it breezy. Northwesterly winds 10 to 15, but they'll call them 5 to 10 tonight. And watch how quickly these numbers fall off tonight. 60 at 6 o'clock, but 47 by midnight. And we'll be in the low 40s by tomorrow morning. 52 tomorrow. That's it. Uh, we mentioned it would be a much cooler day. Cloudy skies, maybe some drizzle, maybe a few showers. Tomorrow is a day in which you will want your jacket and the umbrella. 58 Friday, 67 Saturday. Sunday is not only the Super Bowl, but it is also Groundhog Day. That's your favorite holiday. Uh, yeah, it's you kind know. of the weatherman's holiday. <laughs> I guess. I, you know, Puxitani <laughs> Phil, he's... <laughs> He's, he's tough. Str he struggles with the forecast. He's tough. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh Well, he he doesn't have all the good learning you've got. I was gonna say. You know, I don't think he's even got a degree. Well, well, Not even sure he ever went to meteorology 101. Yeah, well. Weather 101. Didn't do that. It's, uh, it's fun to watch, and uh, we'll see what he has to say on Sunday. Can you tell he's not the biggest fan of I love him. I do. I, I love Phil. All I know is yeah. when I started in broadcasting, that was the one name you had to learn yeah, how to pronounce true. right out of the gate. Punxsutawney. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, the Spurs are getting ready for one of two home games before they head out of town for the rodeo road trip. Let's hope tonight's not Groundhog Day from the last three games. And Patrick Mahomes poised to make, oh, hundreds of millions of dollars. Yep. Spurs just keep slipping and slipping further and further out of that playoff picture in the Western Conference. They lost their third straight game in Chicago Monday. Last night, they didn't even play. It still lost more ground since Memphis won. The Spurs are now two and a half games behind the Grizzlies for the eighth playoff spot in the West. And things are about to really get interesting. They have two games at home, including tonight, before they head out on that rodeo road trip. This year, it's an eight-game, six-city tour that will cover over 23 days on the road. And the Spurs had their chances Monday, even without LaMarcus Aldridge out with a sprained right thumb. Once again, he's going to be out again tonight against Utah. DeMar DeRozan tied his season high with 36, 11 of those coming in the fourth quarter after the Spurs lost 11-point lead in the final period. DeMar had a chance to win the game at the buzzer, but his putback attempt you saw there, it was no good after he missed that game-tying free throw. He tried to get that two-pointer to fall, but it wouldn't fall. The Spurs fall 110-109. Now, after the game, Pop told us these games are still tough to coach and play in the wake of Kobe Bryant's death on Sunday. Young guys idolized Kobe, and the older guys knew him. Uh, and everybody's, you know, in that same boat emotionally. But you know, the, the game was. Uh, I think they 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 played. They competed harder for most of the 48 minutes. All right. So once again, here is that matchup for you for tonight. It's the Spurs and the Jazz, 7:30, and then Saturday it's their last home game before that road trip. That is Charlotte in the AT&T Center. Hey, there's an online petition that now has gained 2 million signatures asking the NBA to change its logo to Kobe Bryant as a way to honor the former Lakers star and five-time NBA champion in the wake of his ultimate death in the California mountains in that helicopter crash. Now, since 1971, the logo has been the silhouette of Jerry West, who is the general manager of the Lakers, when they traded for the rights to draft Kobe. And there's a move among current NBA players who wear the number 8 or 24, self-retire their numbers to honor Kobe. One of the first is Brooklyn Nets' Spencer Dinwiddie, announcing he will change his number 8 to 26. The only spur that wears one of the two numbers is Patty Mills, who is number 8. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. And it was a pretty stunning announcement yesterday. The Houston Texans have a new general manager who will be very familiar to you. It's because he's the head coach. Team chairman and chief executive officer Cal McNair announcing that Bill O'Brien will take on both titles effective immediately. And Jack Easterby is now the executive, principal, the executive vice president of football operations. The Texans played all of 2019 without a general manager after the team fired Brian Gaines last June. And what makes this announcement so stunning is the fact that a lot of folks thought Bill O'Brien should have been fired after the Texans collapsed against the Chiefs in the AFC playoffs when they got out to a 24-point lead, and then they uh, surrendered 41 straight points, and they lost 51-31. And there's a possibility that Kansas City Chiefs star quarterback Patrick Mahomes could be the NFL's first $200 million man. The reason? 
is coming up the Super Bowl week. The Mahomes is eligible for a contract extension after finishing his third season, which would be this Sunday. But the chairman of the Chiefs, Clark Hunt, told ESPN that the team could wait until after next season. Either way, there's talk that it could be as high as $40 million a year for five years. Right now, Mahomes' focus is on beating the Niners in KC's first Super Bowl in 50 years. Obviously, with how the season ended last year, uh, we wanted to be back in the, and have a chance to get to the Super Bowl and have a chance to play in it. Um, but we knew that it was going to take a day-by-day -day thing, and we were, we were going to have to grind. And so I think that was the great thing about this team is that we, we grinded every single day, and that, now we're here. The 49ers also have a star quarterback, a former backup for Tom Brady. He's got two Super Bowl rings to show for it. The Patriots ship Jimmy Garoppolo to San Francisco back in 2017. Now he has him in the Super Bowl after missing most of 2018. Remember, he tore his ACL in week three, ironically, against the Chiefs. Now, after an intense rehab, he started in week one this season, played all 16 games, leading the Niners to a 13-3 record with 27 touchdowns, almost 4,000 yards, and just 13 interceptions. It was a... You know, culmination of just everything that I learned there and how to apply it to the game plan, how to, you know, Coach Belichick was always big on the working hard and every day counts. And I tried to, you know, take that over to San Francisco and apply it there. And, you know, I think we got a great group of guys who just do that naturally. And once again, kickoff is at 5.30 on Sunday on Groundhog Day. <laughs> Could be an interesting day all the way around. Go 49ers. Yeah. Ooh. No. No? Patrick Mahomes. Mahomey. Facebook has given you a glimpse into how it tracks what you do when you're not on its site. How you can stop the site from tracking you. New Today at 5, portable generators can be a lifesaver during a power outage, but they can also be dangerous or even deadly when used improperly. We're going to take a look at the new technology that is changing the way generators detect carbon monoxide and how it can be the difference between life and death. It's Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Here's a live look at Capitol Hill right now as the Senate reconvened in President Trump's impeachment trial in the Senate. Today, that trial moves to the next phase into the questioning. So over the next two days, senators will be allowed to submit questions to the House managers or the president's counsel, but not to both. Questions must be submitted to the chief justice in writing. During the last six days of the trial, we heard arguments from House managers and Trump's defense team. The president's team resting their case on Tuesday with a passionate plea. The bar for impeachment cannot be set this low. Danger, danger, danger. These articles must be rejected. The Constitution requires it. Justice demands it. The question period can go up to eight hours today and Thursday before a possible vote on witnesses on Friday. Without witnesses, this trial could wrap up by the end of the week. You can watch the full trial on KSAT.com. We are live streaming it right now. Overseas, Palestinians have carried out widespread protests against President Trump's Middle East peace plan, but some U.S. allies have reacted to the proposals with optimism. ABC's Julie McFarlane has more for us. It was described as the deal of the century. My vision presents a win-win opportunity for both sides. Your peace plan offers the Palestinians a pathway to a future state. Israel would be prepared to negotiate peace right away. But it was a deal that heavily favors Israel. And under the plan, one of the biggest contentions between both sides, Jewish settlements in the West Bank, which Israel occupies, would fall under Israeli sovereignty. And Israel's territory would expand into the West Bank's strategic Jordan Valley. Hours before the plan was unveiled at the White House, a world away in Gaza, Palestinians already condemning the plan. Thousands of Palestinians burning photos of both President Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Protests continued into the night. Regarding the plan of the century, says Farid, who lives in Gaza, we reject this plan, the plan of shame that has nothing to offer Palestinians. The Palestinian leadership has boycotted the Trump administration ever since it moved the U.S.-Israeli embassy to Jerusalem. 
President Mahmoud Abbas flatly rejecting the plan and Trump's offer of $50 billion of international investment should the Palestinians accept the plan. Trump. He said, I say to Trump and Netanyahu, Jerusalem is not for sale. Prime Minister Netanyahu enthusiastically endorsed the peace plan yesterday, but he may not be in power for much longer. Israel is going to the polls for the third time in less than a year in early March, and yesterday Netanyahu was formally indicted on charges of corruption. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. A person who was hospitalized with critical injuries from an eruption last month on a New Zealand volcano has now died. That brings the death toll here to 21. The victims, whose name has not yet been released, died at an Auckland hospital. There were 47 people visiting the tourist destination of White Island when the volcano erupted December 9th. Initially, 13 people were killed and more than two dozen others were hospitalized with severe burns. Eight more victims have now died in hospitals in New Zealand and Australia in the weeks since this eruption. The United Nations has been hacked. That's according to the Associated Press. It says an internal confidential document from the United Nations was leaked to the new humanitarian. That document reportedly says dozens of servers were compromised at the UN's offices in Geneva and Vienna. The hack was first detected over the summer. One UN official told the AP that the hack appeared sophisticated and that the extent of the damage remains unclear. The UN document highlights a vulnerability in the software program Microsoft SharePoint, which could have been used for the hack. The Tokyo Organizing Committee of the Olympics and Paralympics Games held a press tour of the village plaza today. One of the main facilities in the athletes village as well as the venue for the team's welcome events. They also held a ceremony to thank the 63 participating municipalities who have provided timber to be used in the construction of the village plaza. The opening ceremonies for the 2020 Summer Olympics will be held on July 24th. Outside with live cam, absolutely gorgeous afternoon. Now, this is the kind of winter we like. It's not that cold, but it's beautiful out there. It has been one heck of a winter. It's been warm. We've had a lot of sunny days. In years past, we've had a lot of cloudy days during the winter. That has not been the case so far this winter. It does change a little bit tomorrow, though. The clouds will fill in, and then we'll see maybe a few showers tomorrow, too. I want to show you the lows this morning. We got down to 43 here in San Antonio, 37 in Uvalde, 38 in Kerrville this morning. It was cold. We also had a pretty breezy wind to go with that. So uh, wind chills dropped down into the 30s even here in San Antonio. But look how much we've rebounded now. 58 degrees at the airport, 58 Port SA, 57 Randolph. And I do think a lot of places will get into the 60s this afternoon, probably low 60s before we drop back into the 40s tonight. So here's what you need to know next couple days. Sunny, breezy and mild today. And then tomorrow, clouds fill in. We'll get some morning drizzle. It'll be much cooler. Highs tomorrow, only in the 50s. It'll be jacket weather most of the day tomorrow. But the weekend brings more sun and warmer. So we're going back and forth here. And uh, we may get some more rain chances down the line. We're going to talk more about that forecast and get you set for the weekend, too, coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Boeing has reported its first annual net revenue loss in more than two decades. It comes amid fallout from the grounding of Boeing 737 MAX planes. The aerospace giant reported a net loss of $636 million for 2019. The company has not reported a yearly loss since 1997. Deliveries of the 737 MAX came to a screeching halt in March because of two crashes that killed 346 people. Airbus is facing a record fine, $4 billion, in a preliminary deal to settle a bribery and corruption probe. Yeah, the airplane maker has been under investigation over jetliner sales for nearly four years. Without the deal, it could have been hit with criminal charges that might have banned it from public contracts in the U.S. and in Europe. Facebook has launched a new tool. It's called the Off Facebook Activity Tool. According to the company, it gives users summary of businesses and organizations that share information with the site. It also shows the kind of activity they share. Facebook says companies will tell them things like when you've opened an app, made a purchase or made a donation or searched for an item. The site then uses that information for their ads. 
You can find the tool under Facebook information in the site settings. Facebook says users can disconnect their off Facebook activities by clearing its history and turning off future off Facebook activity. And SpaceX had a successful launch from Cape Canaveral on, in Florida today after scrapping Monday and Tuesday's planned launches due to weather. Liftoff just after 8 this morning, the company sent a Falcon at 9 rocket carrying 60 small internet beaming satellites into orbit, joining dozens of others. More launches are lined up for this year as part of the company's unprecedented push to build its broadband internet business Starlink. The goal is to offer affordable internet service to parts of the U.S. and Canada by summer. And eventually to beam cheap high-speed broadband across the globe, including rural areas that do not currently have internet access. If you're worried about automation taking your job or making your job obsolete, you're not alone. In fact, the world's most famous groundhog could lose his job to a robot. Remember Puxatoni? We were just talking about him. <laughs> And the dangers of vaping still get a lot of attention these days, but despite the increased attention, the use of e-cigarettes is actually on the rise. The numbers revealed in a new study. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. We have news on vaping. A new study suggests the number of people trying the e-cigarette jewel does not appear to be decreasing. In other words, it's still happening despite all of the bad news. Alicia Barrera has more on that. It's a hot button health issue with 60 deaths and more than 2,600 lung injury linked hospitalizations associated with vaping according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. A new study published in the Pediatric Journal of the American Medical Association says last year, the numbers of those between the ages of 15 and 34 who tried the e-cigarette jewel increased from about 6% in 2018 to 13.5% in 2019. Use was the highest among those between the ages of 18 and 20 and for those participants between 21 to 24. In the months after the study's data were collected, Juul removed many flavored products from the U.S. market, citing underage use. But researchers say findings of the study underscore the critical need for increased e-cigarette product regulation at the federal, state, and local levels. Alicia Barrera, KSAT, 12 News. The study found a number of factors linked to those who have tried Juul, including living in a home where someone used e-cigarettes and the belief that vaping is actually less harmful than cigarettes. Outside with live cam, it's dry, it's chilly. Feels like, I don't know, January? It does feel like January. You're spot on because today is basically an average January day. We're gonna be up around 63, 64 for a high. The low this morning was right about on average. So again, this is an average day. Things are going to change tomorrow. I think we go below average. I think we may pick up a little bit of rainfall. Uh, the records for today are 86 and 18, so it has been much, much colder. That was back in 1951. We have a look at your seven day forecast straight ahead. PETA asking that Punxsutawney Phil be replaced by an animatronic groundhog. Punxsutawney Phil is Pennsylvania's famed weather forecasting rodent who predicts the onset of spring every year on Groundhog Day, Justin's favorite little animal. <laughs> PETA made its request in a letter to Phil's keepers on Monday. The organization objects to the conditions of the Phil's captivity and believes the Groundhog Day event is too stressful for him. According to Punxsutawney Phil Groundhog Club's website, he lives in a man-made climate-controlled and light-regulated zoo. He looks like he's having a good time. What would you, what do you think, Justin? Would a robot do you just fine? I, I'm not gonna weigh in on that one. I don't know. <laughs> that's uh, that seems like controversy there. I don't know. Would a well, robot have a better chance of picking the weather? 
Well, it depends on how it's programmed. There, there's well, a lot of it, questions here. It's about the, sh the shadow, right? It's I all mean, about the shadow. a robot could detect a shadow. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, it is all about the shadow. That's yeah. True. So it's pretty basic. Yeah. And, and that's why there's so many. Uh, it's not just Pakistani Phil. There are other animals. We have the uh, well, it, it, armadillo here, yeah. I believe. So, right. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and how can a, a groundhog in in Pennsylvania determine what our weather is going to be here in Texas. Well, Hello, he if you look at the temperature. He doesn't have a great <laughs> track record. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens on Sunday and we'll see if uh, chances are yeah. it feels like winter is not going to be extended here. That's just the way it feels. Let's take a look at the extremes across the country if you had any doubt. 88 oh, my wow, goodness. yesterday in McAllen got down to negative 10 in Clayton Lake, Maine. So you really got to go to the extreme corners of the country to find the temperature extremes. But South Texas has been a winner for the last couple days. 98 degrees temperature difference from low to high across the country. So pretty big range there. We still haven't seen that really cold air, though, dropping down from Canada. There are some indications maybe middle part of next week we'll get some colder air. But uh, we still have some time to watch that, and it's still pretty early. We'll keep you posted. Blue skies right now, 58 degrees. Dew point is at 37. We've got northerly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Winds have been a little bit breezy, but not as strong as they were yesterday. Look at these wind gusts from yesterday. 41 mile per hour wind gusts in Rock Springs, 43 in Del Rio. We had a gust of 33 here in San Antonio. So the winds were very strong, especially during the afternoon. So this is a better scenario here with uh, winds averaging about oh, 5 to 15, I'd say. And they'll calm even more tonight, which uh, will allow temperatures to fall off a little bit until the clouds move in. We expect those clouds by tomorrow morning. 56 in Kerrville, 59 New Braunfels, 62 right now in Pleasanton. We're sitting at 64 in Carrizo Springs. Very pleasant. High temperatures today, low 60s here in town. We'll get up close to 70, some of those warmer spots down to the south and west. And I'd say a sunny day for most of us. Uh, visible satellite picture shows that we have no cloud cover until you get off to the north and east. So around Houston, that is where they are seeing clouds. And as we uh, zoom out a little bit here, strip of clouds basically across northeast Texas. Everyone else is, is sunny, and that's sort of a holdover from that last system. But these clouds are actually going to move back in our direction. As our next system moves in, these clouds will fill back in and we'll go cloudy tomorrow. Our next system, by the way, out here over parts of Arizona, bringing a little bit of rain to Phoenix. This uh, storm system does not have a ton of moisture to work with. It's not super dynamic, but uh, we can pick it up on water vapor and it'll be moving right through South Texas. So we've got to put rain chances in there tomorrow. We've lowered it to about a 30% chance. I think what you'll notice most are the cloudy skies and maybe a little bit of drizzle here and there. And the future cast uh, does show that uh, we'll get sunny skies this evening, but those clouds quickly come in by tomorrow morning. A couple showers out there and then uh, that continues through the day, even through six o'clock. Can't rule out a couple isolated showers, probably slightly heavier rain along the coast with this system. And then uh, by Friday morning, a lot of the rain moves out, but the clouds stick with us. And it'll take some time on Friday before these clouds completely go away. And then by the weekend, we'll get some more sun and some pretty nice weather. Forecast for today, 63 breezy. Northwesterly winds, I'd say more 5 to 15. Notice the temperature drops off quickly tonight, 47 degrees by midnight. And then we'll go down to 42 by tomorrow morning. 30% chance of showers, a high of only 52 tomorrow. 58 Friday, partly cloudy Saturday, 67. Weather looks good for all the festivities going on this weekend. And Super Bowl Sunday and also Groundhog Day, 69, mostly cloudy. So will the uh, armadillo in Texas see its shadow? Uh, well, I think it could. I think that possibility is there. Where in Texas is the armadillo? I believe that's in Austin. Is Austin? Bee Cave Bob, I want to say. I could, uh, you know. I think you're right. I yeah. think you're right. It's snowing in Lubbock in 88 in Brownsville. Well, Texas, so. yeah. It's kind it's, of a large state. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, this is always a fan's favorite. The Rampage is going to host their 10th annual Pink in the Rink Night. It's coming up this Friday. The evening celebrates cancer survivors and raises awareness for breast health. The game will be played, of course, on pink ice. The Rampage will wear custom pink jerseys, which will have a patch bearing a name of a cancer fighter or survivor. Now, this tends to be the biggest game of the year for the Rampage. Something new this year, Travis Park will be pinked out with balloons, ribbons, and streamers leading up to the evening. And then the new Frost Bank Tower will be lit pink throughout the week. That's Friday night. 
course, that is their only game this week. They host the Texas Stars Friday. It's at 7 o'clock. This is their last home game until the end of February because they got to move out of the AT&T Center for the rodeo. So be sure to give them some love on Pink and the Reek Night Friday. We're getting all geared up for the rodeo uh, right now. And uh, Mike and Fiona are going to be joining us on Saturday morning for the cattle drive through downtown San Antonio. I love that. Oh, so much. Yes. yes, we are definitely counting down to that Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, which is just, as we mentioned, you know, just a few days away. And something that's brand new this year, a part of the celebration, it's the KSAT Corral. Yeah, that's a party that you can be a part of. And, oh my goodness gracious, you can't have a cowboy party without having a chuck wagon. And Jeff Hardwick, the owner of Purgatory Provisions, is here. And he's going to be cooking on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And no electricity. You cook the old-fashioned way like no, cowboys do, No right? electricity, cooking under the stars. We're using coals. Um, in San Antonio, Texas, everybody's a barbecue expert. Everybody barbecues in the backyard. But this is cooking with coals, and anything you can do in an oven, you can do in this little pot right here. And the number of coals determines the temperature, right? That's true. Okay, we're going to be cooking dessert in that. Uh, yes. Dutch oven right there. All right. Well, do you got milk for a tall order? Oh, yes. We introduce you to one of the How newest cute. additions there at Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch as we bottle feed a baby giraffe. It's a long drink of milk. And, you know, we love our pets, but their behavior mm, can be a little bit iffy. You need your dog to sit or maybe grab something out of the fridge. Dog training starts here, and we've got somebody that can put you on the right path to that. And mm, yes. are you ready? Ready for this? Okay. Go ahead. Let them see what's inside. Uh, yes, the chilly weather has us craving a hot bowl of soup and a simple recipe for chicken soup that will soothe you, maybe your sniffles and warm you right up. You're going to share it. Oh, I can't wait to taste this. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live, so stick around. <laughs>